Hi, I'm Vinny Lugosio. Welcome back to another DIY prop shop. Let's make something cool. Before we get started, just wanted to give a quick shout out to Loot Crate for sponsoring this week's episode. Loot Crate, if you're not familiar, is a monthly subscription service where every month they will send you a box full of really geeky items. There's always kind of a different theme. Um, we got a Halo 5 lunchbox, kind of a knit pixely shirt with uh, the Curiosity Rover. Even more stuff in the box. Galaxy Quest patch, you put that on your backpack or your jacket. Pretty awesome. Loot Crate is less than 20 bucks a month, but also click the link below in the description and use the discount code ALLME, that's A-W-E-M-E, -E, when you sign up, you'll get a 10% discount. Makes a pretty nice gift too. So today, we're gonna be making the face mask from Mad Max, uh, that kind of fork muzzle. The War Boys put it on him when he gets captured and he wears it for most of the film. It looks super comfortable. We're gonna be trying a new material today, something very durable and I think it should be very interesting to sculpt by hand, and that's black thermoplastic. It's my first time using it, so hey, we'll learn it together. We're gonna to start by making some paper templates of all of these parts because it's a lot easier to make changes on paper than it is with a hard plastic. I'm not gonna use hard measurements in this because everybody's face is different and you should really make one that's custom fit to you. So I'm gonna start by drawing the fork piece first and I'm going to use my demon left hand to do it. All right, so I've drawn half of this fork and it's looking like I might have just too much space between the prongs, so I'll make that adjustment. Now we're going to do something that is super cheaty and I love it. I don't trust myself to get those details exactly symmetrical. That's why I've only drawn half and we're going to fold the page, flip it over, mark down the transfer lines and see how we look. So we've got enough of a ghosted image on the other side of the center line that I can use that as a guide to start darkening those lines. We can now cut out our first template here. So I've got my super bendy ruler here, and I'm going to use this to get the distance from ear to ear around my jaw. Wow, really? So we've got our paper template all done, and this is just a collection of pieces all kind of cobbled together, which is really how the mask looks. And just as a test fit, this is a really good time to make sure that all of this fits exactly the way that you'd like it to, uh, because working with paper is very, very easy to change. So when you're ready, we're gonna move on to the big stuff. Uh, this is a roll of thermoplastic, and I've mentioned it now in this episode, but this is a material that when you apply heat to it, it actually becomes malleable to your touch, and then you can sculpt that, and as it cools, it becomes very nice and rigid. I bought a big roll of this because I know that I'm gonna use it for other projects, but you can get small samples of this for roughly $25, $30. So we're going to take all of our paper templates, trace them onto the thermoplastic, heat them up, and then wrap them into the shapes that we want. And when we want a little bit of thickness on some of these pieces, like I'm thinking maybe that front trident shape, I've also got some foam paper that we're going to sandwich in between two pieces of the thermoplastic. Oh, awesome. So, as you can see, I've got my table all shiny and chrome. Actually, it's aluminum foil, and I'm just using that to protect the surface from the heat because this heat gun gets extremely hot. I really want to point out, this is not a hair dryer. You need to be really, really careful with this, especially do not touch the metal part on the front. You're gonna hold it away from your body as you heat up the thermoplastic and sheets. Especially do not do this on carpet or anything flammable. Your parents are gonna be really pissed. So, I've got all of my cutout pieces lined up and ready to go. We're gonna go double layers for all of the straps, and for the fork foam paper, I'm going to sandwich that right in between the two. I'm gonna put the heat gun to its low setting, and you see almost immediately how the heat takes that natural curve out of it since it came in that roll. Should be pretty nice. We're going double thick. If you end up with fingernail marks or kind of like crinkles in this stuff, I wouldn't really be too concerned with it because in the movie, it looks pretty beat up. So as a prop, it really lends itself to some rough handling. That shine quality starts to go away as you heat, and actually that's a good way to see your progress. It's not like working with epoxy where you've got seconds, there's a little forgiveness in here. I'm gonna give it the once over. 
and a flip. Back side. So with the fork, just like before, I am going to heat up one side, heat up the other side, quickly sandwich the foam thickness in there and lay it smack over the top. You can see that I've got some excess material that is overlapped on the edges. While this is still kind of warm, I'm going to take that opportunity to cut all of that down. That's kind of cool too. It looks like we'll have some flexibility to move the prongs around if they end up being too close or too wide or whatever. It looks like we're coming apart a little bit. Let's see if we can fix that. Seal that right up. If it is a little bit too hot while you're touching it, you can use some kind of edge tool that you might have around the house. From the reference images, it looks like each of the prongs are a little bit curved back on themselves. So I'm gonna put a bend radius in the two little curves and then I'll come back and I'll do a big bend for the entire thing right down the center line. And now I'm going to heat up this strap piece and fit it right into that angle that we just made. We want to heat both surfaces. Let's see if we can hold that for a couple of seconds just to get a good mold happening. That's pretty good. Oh yeah. Yeah, just bendy enough. One of the last things that we'll need to add to this is the head strap that goes all the way around your skull, holds things in place. So our head strap is bonded in. Now we need something, a belt, around the bottom of the neck so that you can now take this mask on and off. You could make it a fully bonded piece, but then you'd probably have to file it off. So in order to put this belt on, I've cut out these tabs and I'll stick these onto the back so that I can loop the belt around. And then after that, I've cut out some bolt heads, also from the thermoplastic. Just by using heat, we'll be able to stick all over this mask. So now we can paint. We're gonna hit this with a coat of primer and then a coat of silver hammer textured paint. So aside from the hammered silver paint, I also hit it with a little bit of bronze just for some rust type detailing. And now for the last bit of painting, I'm gonna dry brush it with some black. I've dipped my brush in just a little bit of black acrylic paint, scratched it off as much as possible, and I've only got just the tiniest amount of dry paint on the brush. Now we're gonna just kinda start from the bottom and work our way up on detailing. So I've cut the straps to exactly the length that I'll need. So now I can just fold the tabs over and glue it up. What a lovely day! I will say that the mask is more comfortable than I thought it was gonna be. This was a pretty good build. I think we learned some great skills with the thermoplastic. I was really, really happy with the detail on how that all came out. I think if you ever wanna cosplay Mad Max, you make this mask, make a fake chain with a bloodline and wear, I guess, a shirt, and you're pretty much good to go. So I'm Vinny, thank you for witnessing me. And keep sending us more ideas for new episodes. And if you can build this at home, I'll send you to Valhalla myself. Click the box on the right to sign up for Loot Crate now. You'll receive your own box of awesome and save 10% on a new subscription by using the code AWME. You have until February 19th at 9 p.m. Pacific to subscribe and receive the February Crate, which includes an exclusive collectible. The February Crate is themed dead with awesome items from shows like The Walking Dead.